Hey guys, in the previous video of Sudoku Solver, we had learned two functions. Uh, the first being the function print board, which accepts a parameter board and prints it out in a Sudoku like format, which is in rows and columns. And the second function was find empty, which we haven't used today. Uh, I'll just recap. This function enters the board and checks whether and checks whether we need uh, whether there is a zero that is an empty space in that spot. So anyway, let's continue with the tutorial. So there are two more functions to be learned. One is the function valid, which will check whether a function is uh, whether a given board is solvable or not so for this we will take two para uh, we will take three parameters bo num and pause so the number is the current number which we have to check and pause is the position of that number so let's begin coding the function so first we need to check the row let me just comment it out here check row so in this we'll open a for loop for i in range and the range will be len bow zero we will open a function uh, we will open the loop len bow zero in this we will open another loop uh, another conditional which says if bow so because it is a board we need to have a uh, because it is a two dimensional board we need to have two parameters so the first will be pause first will be pause zero and the second will be i if bow pause is exactly equal to the number which we are looking for which means that this line will check whether there is another number which has the same value as the number we are checking in that given row so if this is true and because uh, and uh, because the number should not count itself we will write and pause one is not equal to num so that you know it doesn't check itself and give an error is not equal to i sorry because uh, we need to check the current number so we will return false in this case now we will we need to check the column now check column so in this we open another loop for i in range len len bow so this was a mistake let me correct it yeah there we go when i is in the range length of bow which means it checks the entire column from top to bottom then we will open another conditional we will open another conditional if bow bow i pause one because uh, if we start from the from zero then it will be an error out of bounds so we don't want that and we'll check if this is exactly equal to the number we are looking for and that current number is not the same number we are checking 
not equal to i then we will return false so this pattern is pretty similar to the one which is above and if you didn't understand let me just quickly recap so in this case the board the len bow refers to this and then I, I, it refers to this the vertical section sorry i cut it by mistake so so first it goes down vertically and then it checks uh so suppose my number currently is 8 it will check whether 8 is in occurs any time else well, it does not occur anytime else. The only place it occurs is there. And since we have already written the exclusive condition that we should not check this area again, so it will not throw out an error. Similarly, we will check the box now. Check box. This box is slightly complicated. So I will explain it to you step by step. In this, we need to create two new variables, box x, which will be equal to pause one, and which will be divided by three. Remember, we are using the double backslashes so that it does not refer to three as an escape sequence and throw out an error. Similarly, we will write box y is equal to pause 0 because we need to check from the beginning and, uh, and we will divide this by 3. So, we have declared these two variables and then let's begin. For i in range so now it, we will take two parameters box box y box y into 3 book and box x into 3 plus 3 because if we don't write this 3 this plus 3 is very important otherwise it will throw out an error saying that it is out of bounds so we will copy this again and we will enter it again there is no difference and we will enter this two times because we want to check a 3 by 3 box which includes 8 0 0 0 0 3 and 0, 7, 0. That's why we are using the 3 so many times. And that's why it's a double for loop so that we can in, uh, remain in that same box. So here we will check if bo i j is exactly equal to the number we are looking for and and i comma j i comma j is not equal to the position at which we are currently at then we can say that the number is already present in the box so then we will return false again at this point we know that our function failed because we have forgotten to write a very important step which is the return true block because if it enters this and it says okay it is uh, suppose our number is 8 
So basically, we will check uh, is 8 here? No. Is 8 here in the column? No. Then is 8 here in the box? No. It is not there. If we forget to write this, then it won't return true and our program will have an error. Sorry, this is a J. Yeah, then it will not throw an error. See, yes. So now that we have done this, our next function is the actual solving one. Now this function is the simplest of all the functions and is only a 15 line code. And this is the part which includes the backtracking. Well, this is kind of a recursive function. So let's try it out. It'll take an input bow and it'll enter. So we'll have a variable called fine, which will uh, give us the result from the find empty board. And we will input the bow. Uh, oh, sorry. This is not bow. This is find empty. So this is our first one. It checks this for the zero. If it does not find then we will return true. I will explain this in a moment. Else we will have row and call is equal to find. So this find is actually the uh, value which returns this, the i comma j format so that we exactly get the number. Now that this is done, we need to write for i in range 1 comma 10. Remember that it does not include the last number. So it's actually 1 through 9 if valid now we will check the uh, if our board is valid so if valid bow i and the row call which we got from find If valid is true, then we will enter and say that bow row call because it will return the two dimensional place value and we will make it equal to i so that we can incorporate it in our functions. Now we will enter another conditional if solve bow. If we can solve it, we will return true. Uh, sorry, it needs to be a capital T. So we will return true. And we will go down again and we will declare the thing again to zero because we need to call it again and again. So we will declare it row call equal to zero. Because it is a recursive function, we need to uh, again change it to zero so that it does not confuse itself. Now, we need to write 
another line of code which will say that if the following is not true it means that we cannot fall uh, we cannot solve it because the board is wrong so we will return false so that is it now we just need to call all these functions and our program is complete so first we'll print the board and next we'll solve the board after this we will print a blank so, so that it goes to the next line and then we will print solving so that the user knows that we are actually solving and then we will take another blank space and now we will print the board again print print board board well guys that is it and now since we are done let's check out our code uh, so it does not seem to be showing any errors let's check Mm. guys my computer is a little slow so let's check yes we have made a mistake let's try it out again just to see uh, this is pretty strange okay looks like we found our errors so the first error is at line 42 which is that we cannot have length of board in square brackets we need to have it in round brackets so this will solve one error and it solved all three errors Okay, it did not solve the board. So that is another error. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, I have found the error. So basically, the thing is that the functions were not in were not declared in order. So what we need to do is we need to change the order from first we will declare the board. Then instead of the print board functions, uh, we need to cut and then paste the def uh, solve board function after that we need to uh, copy the uh, valid function then we need to here we need to paste the print board function and then after that we need to print the find board function uh, find empty board function so now when we do this uh, we will run this program and let's see what happens so it gives us the board and here it is here it is the solution and if you look up online for the solution of the world's hardest sudoku you would surely find this so that's it guys for this video uh, it would be a big help to us if you would like, share and subscribe our videos so that we can keep making such content. And um, that's it guys. Thank you.